Do we have anyone? Yeah, we have some people joining now. We'll just give it um, another 30 seconds for the rest sure. of the people to, to come in. So hi, everyone who's joining. We're just going to give it another um, minute or so for everybody to join. Just give it another 30 seconds and then we'll start. Thanks everyone for joining us so far who's joined. I think we'll we'll go ahead and, and get started. So um I'm getting some feedback to start with me. So thank you everybody for joining this session um and welcome. And we've got um Dr. Simon Noble from uh, CHDI with us to share the wonderful work they're doing at CHDI to uh, fight and treat uh, Huntington's disease. They're instrumental, um, but maybe some of the younger people or maybe some people aren't too familiar with, with what they do. So we're thrilled to have Simon here to help us learn more about their work. So this will be a 30 minute talk and we'll have time for questions at the end. So if you can put any questions you have into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we'll come to the questions at the end. Um, and there's also a chat box if you wish to, to say anything to us as well. So I'll hand over to Simon if you want to go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Haley. And uh, first of all, uh, many congratulations to Matt and colleagues for organizing this first HDO Congress. Um, I'm a huge fan of HDO, so um, uh, HDO has an extremely important role to play in the HD community. So thank you very much for inviting me to speak. So today I'm going to give you a quick overview of CHDI, <clears throat> some of our principles and practices that uh, define us. And um, <clears throat> since that is a bit abstract, I'm going to illustrate with uh, what CHCI does with a couple of examples. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our mission statement is to collaboratively develop therapeutics that substantially improve the lives of those affected by Huntington's disease. Now, uh, a couple of things jump out from that is, uh, and that from that statement, um, Huntington's disease is the only disease we work on. We work on nothing else. So that gives us a laser-like focus. We have no uh, confounding uh, other things to think about, just Huntington's disease. Collaboratively, we want to develop these collaboratively. Um, developing HC therapeutics is a very tough problem and uh, the HC community has to work together to solve this problem and uh, substantially improve the lives. Um, we're not looking to, to uh, develop um, drugs that are specific to, to certain symptoms. We're looking for drugs that will substantially improve the lives, um, disease, that will um, delay disease progression, slow the disease, disease progression, or at the very least um, be in a domain that's very important to families such as uh, cognition. So what is CHDI? So we're privately funded um, with, we're very fortunate to get uh, funding, gener very generous funding from private donors. That gives us a uh, great freedom to operate and uh, we can do many things in parallel. And it also means importantly that we don't have to spend any time uh, raising money. Many nonprofits have to spend a significant uh, time and effort to raise money, we don't have to do that, it's, which is uh, very um, fortunate. We're a, we, uh, we're a nonprofit, we're motivated by time and our mission, not uh, by money. And uh, since we're, we, not, we are a nonprofit, though we have no competitors, only collaborators and potential collaborators. So we want to encourage uh, scientific partnership. And uh, one, one of the things we like to describe ourselves uh, is by the name, a collaborative enabler. And by that, we mean um, provide things 
um, share things, provide funding, provide uh, assets, provide reagents, uh, animal models, etc., uh, and share those widely. And uh, our one of our goals is to uh, get as many people as possible from university, biotech, pharma, wherever, working on HD. Um, so we're not a traditional funding agency. I sometimes describe us as a scientific management organization. And uh, that's because we don't give out grants uh, as funding agencies normally do. Um, you know, give out a, a bunch of money and say, come back and tell us what you found in a couple of years time. We don't do that. We, um, we uh, our science directors uh, remain involved with the, uh, with the uh, in, in the research project meet regularly with the research group, whether they're academics or biotech, to discuss uh, results and agree the next steps. And uh, this is to ensure that uh, we, the therapeutic goals remain in focus and we want this to be a purposeful managed activity. Um, we're also extremely flexible. We'll respond to um, developments in the research landscape, obviously over the um, 19 years now that CHDI has been in existence, the landscape has changed significantly. And so um, we're always looking uh, to see where we can be most beneficial. Um, we essentially, we plug gaps. It's not the most glamorous description of what we do, but it's essential for successful drug delivery. We do the things that uh, other organizations uh, can't or won't for various reasons. Um, we have 110 internal staff at uh, CHDI. Uh, about 50 of those are PhDs, and many of those have um, a drug development background. Uh, all experiments are done externally. Um, we uh, work with collaborative partners in academia. Uh, we fund a lot of university research groups, and we also fund uh, biotechs. Um, and I'll come back to that in a bit. Um, we also work with uh, contract research organizations, um, CROs. Uh, these are lab facilities that have uh, expert scientists there, and for a fee, they'll carry out uh, research programs, and uh, that's what we, how we work with uh, on our own internal programs. We work with uh, our close colleagues at uh, the CROs. Um, we've worked with a number of these CROs for a long time, and they've become very close colleagues. So all in all told, um, we partly manage over 750 external staff worldwide. Um, that's in universities and biotechs and CROs. So this is the four ways that CHDI works. It's a recap of what's of, uh, some recap of some of what I've just said. Uh, collaborative enablement, um, we provide research funding and centralized assets such as biosample and data repositories. Anything that uh, is made with CHDI funding, we, we are happy to share if we're, if we're able. Uh, so this is reagents, um, uh, tools, HD know-how, uh, animal models, uh, all sorts of things. We'll, uh, we'll share antibodies, we'll share as widely as we can. Um, we partner with Biotech to identify, uh, with, we, part of our, the role of our science directors is to uh, always be on the lookout for promising new technologies to apply to hunting disease. And um, once we've done that, we'll approach the biotechs and uh, you know, work towards a true collaborative partnership um, with uh, applying their technology uh, to Huntington's disease. Uh, we also have outreach to pharma. Uh, we want to lower the barrier for entry into HD for pharmaceutical companies, which means um, largely getting the clinical infrastructure in place. And uh, Enroll HD is the observational study that uh, CHDI launched and supports and manages. And that's a big part of our clinical infrastructure that is uh, intended to, uh, in, to, intended in part to uh, encourage um, pharmaceutical companies to join in to HD therapeutics. Uh, and we also, um, other cl clinical infrastructure like uh, biomarker development, assay development, again, uh, things, assets that can be used in a clinical trial setting. Uh, all of this uh, encourages uh, pharma uh, participation. And then we have CHDI internal projects that I was just talking about uh, at the CROs. Um, this is orch orchestrated across a network of CROs um, and they are our close colleagues now. We design and oversee the research with input from, from our CRO colleagues. 
So our overall strategy is to de-risk therapeutic programs to the point where pharma will take them on. And that means, uh, well, so first of all, only pharma has the expertise and capacity to take drugs through clinical trial to regulatory approval and then onto market and into patients. Um, so pharma is the, uh, the uh, where that expertise lies. So uh, in order to convince uh, pharma to get in, involved, it requ usually requires a convincing package of scientific uh, findings, um, plus the clinical, clinical infrastructure I've talked about. And um, over the years, we've uh, CACI has, has, has uh, been uh, has, has exerted a large effort to bring pharma companies into the HC therapeutic space. So that's a quick overview of um, quick overview of CHDI, um, the nuts and bolts, as I was saying, and how we go about developing drugs. Um, but that's a bit abstract. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples to see uh, where we work and how we work. So one. Uh, So one such technology um, we, we identified early on was um, antisense oligoglutides, uh, ASOs, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And um, I want to give a quick history of the uh, Ionis uh, Roche project. Um, in 2006, CHCI approached Ionis. Uh, then they were called ISIS. They were a fairly small biotech company. And um, set out to convince them to apply uh, ASOs to Huntington's disease. And they were convinced, uh, seeing as it's a devastating disease with, a, it's a, with very few therapeutic options at the moment. And uh, single gene mutation is very, very uh, amenable to uh, being uh, affected by ASOs. So uh, Ionis was interested and the collaboration took off and CSDI provided financial support to uh, Ionis and to uh, some academic groups that were associated with the, with the program. And uh, indeed, over the years, the ASO drug was developed that uh, indeed lowered Huntington. And um, this was in, in mice and uh, non-human primate models in rhesus macaques. Then in 2013, uh, Roche came along, bought into the Ionis program. And by in 2015, Ionis launched the uh, phase 1-2A trial. Uh, the uh, safety and early efficacy trial with 46 participants. And that led to this uh, momentous occasion where Sarah Tabrizi was presenting the results in February 2018 at CHGI's HC Therapeutics Conference. And this was the first time it was shown in public that indeed um, the ASO from Ionis could, uh, in a dose dependent manner, lower Huntington protein in the CSF, which in the cerebral spinal fluid of Huntington's patients, which was hugely exciting, of course, and inspired uh, the next step, which is, uh, you know, only less than a year later, um, Roche launched Generation HD1, which is uh, the phase three trial from, uh, that's now evaluating clinical benefit. And uh, in 909 participants, Results are expected in mid 2022, and everybody's very excited to see what those results will be. And uh, CHCI continues to provide advice and research support to uh, the Roche program. Another area where CHCI has been uh, able to uh, bring its funding to uh, to benefit is um, in genetic modifiers. So. Uh, we know we all know that uh, HD is is relatively predictable, uh, particularly if you take large numbers of people. You can see that uh, longer CAG repeats are associated with earlier onset. But we also know that uh, if you take two people with uh, a CAG repeat of 40, then one person might be unfortunate enough to have onset at age in their 30s, whereas others uh, might only have not delay onset until the 60s, and what that's telling us is that at least some of these differences are due to other genes that modify the age of onset. There'll be some environmental factors involved, but that uh, the, the variation in age of onset that is not attributable to the length of the CAG repeat is due to other genes in the genome. So that gives, uh, so CHI helped put together and fund some of the work from the GEM consortium, the Genetic Modifiers Consortium to identify some of these modifiers. 
and they carried out genome-wide association studies uh, known as GWAS, you might be familiar with, to survey thousands of genomes um, looking for genes that either delayed or accelerated onset. If you know what accelerates, then you can inhibit that and uh, hopefully delay the onset. So these, this, this, uh, this schema was, uh, was began, begun with uh, the GEM consortium, and now 14,000 HD research participants, 10,000 of those are from an enrolled HD, have now been GWASD. Uh, their genomes have been surveyed, and several modifiers have been identified, several modified genes have been identified. And what makes these so special is they are very promising drug targets. We know they alter the age of onset for HD. So if we can do what, the, what that uh, gene does, then um, that would give us a very, very effective drug. So, um, and some biotechs are already pursuing these targets. So I wanted to uh, play a short video for, to let uh, Brian Bettencourt, who is uh, senior vice president, one of these uh, new companies that are looking at these genetic modifiers, this triplet, th triplet therapeutics, uh, he described in our postcard from Palm Springs uh, last, last year um, how we go about these modified genes. By way of analogy, you know, there are many genes in your genome that actually influence your eye color or your hair color, right? There are one or two that are really, really important, but there are actually many others in the genome that have more subtle effects on that phenotype. So same case with Huntington, where there's one gene, Huntington, Right, that is the causal gene for the disease, but there are a number of other genes that were identified in the GWAS that can alter how soon or how late um, your, your symptoms come on. So then if you can actually identify which those genes are, then, then so what? what? What do you do then? The simple answer is you drug them. You look at what nature has told us about the genome. It says, hey, this gene is protective when it behaves like this. It does good things for patients, right? So we say, okay, so that means that in all people, if we can make a drug that does the same thing as this natural variation, then that's a great way to drug the phenotype. So Huntington's families are familiar with antisense oligos, ASOs, uh, that are currently being applied right now to patients. And we're taking a similar approach, developing oligos just to knock down different genes other than Huntington. My company, Triplet Therapeutics, was quite literally founded based on the information that came out of the Huntington's GWAS. That's why we're here. The GWAS provided us a really, really rich list of good gene targets for drugs. We've developed oligos to knock them down and we've screened them in our own laboratories and we're bringing the best ones forward through animal studies and we should be administering them to humans if everything works out uh, in 2021. How important has been the contribution of Huntington's families over the years to this work? Uh, enormously important. Literally, our company, this entire approach, wouldn't be here if it weren't for all the patients that submitted their blood and their time to Enroll HD and, and similar uh, studies so that we could conduct the GWAS. None of the information would be possible without their contribution. So I'd, I would advise people uh, that want to learn more to go to the CACI website and uh, there's a series of postcards from Palm Springs, uh, Charles Sabah in there, which I'm sure some of you will recognize. Uh, he and I work together to put the postcard out each, uh, each year. Obviously, there won't be one this year, I'm afraid, but uh, last year's is very relevant. Uh, the person speaking after Brian in the short video is Sarah Tabrizi, and she's speaking about the HD Yaz study, the HD Young Adult study. So I'd recommend people, uh, if they want to learn more, um, take a look over there. By way of analogy, you know, there are many genes in your genome Stop that, that actually I'm influence to get your... To our next slide, never mind. So... As I said, uh, CSI has been uh, exerted uh, large efforts to uh, get companies, more companies working on HD therapeutics. And uh, probably the first biotech company was uh, Ionis Pharmaceuticals, to at least to take a serious interest and uh, have a uh, fruitful program. First pharmaceutical company was Pfizer in 2010. Now I've already given away the secrets, but uh, if you look at today, 
Currently, we have 38 companies working on HD therapeutics, which is pretty amazing. Um, I arrived in the HD field 10 years ago, and there was nothing at all. Um, so apart from a couple of biotech. So this is amazing to how far the HD therapeutic development has come uh, in such a short time. And uh, here is triplet therapeutic on the uh, left-hand side here, you can see triplet uh, therapeutics there. Their uh, ASOs are looking at uh, to tackle somatic instability and uh, Vertex, Locus 23 and Pfizer also have uh, molecule programs on a similar approach. Here in the uh, red box is um, uh, what's called small molecules. So Novartis, PTC, Skyhawk and uh, CHDI, we're all are trying to develop small molecules. And what that means is basically this is, this is small molecules to lower the levels of Huntington. And what a small molecule means basically is a pill. So you'd be able to take a pill and lower the amount of Huntington, not only Huntington generally, but the mutant bad Huntington. And if that seems like science fiction, then uh, you're right, it does. It still seems like science fiction to me, but these are hugely exciting times. So lots and lots of things going on. And uh, it's, uh, yes, very, very exciting. Having trouble with my controls. Yeah. So as I, as I was saying, clinical infrastructure is the critical component. Um, Enroll HD is uh, something that CHDI launched and uh, funds and manages. Uh, it's for and by the HD community, uh, participants and their families, clinicians and researchers. And if you want to learn more about that, I'm sure you're familiar with the, with the name, but if you want to learn more, then Olivia Han my colleague Olivia is giving a presentation later today at 9.30 GMT, 5.30 EST. So I recommend you uh, take a look there. And I'll stop there and uh, take any questions. Thank you to all of my colleagues at CHGI. These are them listed here, or not listed, but uh, on our logo. And uh, thank you all so very much for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. I'll be happy to answer any questions. No, fantastic. Thank you so much, Simon, for that um, comprehensive overview. That was really helpful. Um, I've, I've just got a few questions while we wait for some more other questions to come in. So maybe for mm -hmm. people who aren't familiar, I know you've got, I know CHDA have got maybe a few sites in the US. Could you maybe just tell us, I guess, where maybe it's different now during COVID, but where you guys are based or where you all work? Yes, we're in the US. So we have three offices, one in New York, um, which is the one I'm at, uh, one in New York City, that is. Uh, one in Princeton, which is in New Jersey, just across the, um, the river. And then another one in uh, Los Angeles. So uh, we're, for various different reasons, we're in three different offices. But um, as you know, we, we work internationally. So uh, yeah, we do a lot of traveling. No, that's fantastic. And I think um, it was interesting you mentioned about triplet as well. So um, on the video you shared, so triplet therapeutics for anyone who's interested aren't speaking at this event, this current event, but Matt did a session with them that's on our YouTube channel. So Matt did a session called Matt's Chats and it's I think a 20 or 30 minute discussion with uh, Irina who is, um, I don't know if she's the chief medical officer. She was, I think she's changed all the time, but one of the um, yeah. you know, top scientists at, at, at Triplet, um, Dr. Irina, who you can view that video on YouTube as well. Um, just one question around the GWAS or GWAS. Yeah. Um, we, we mentioned that a couple of times. I wondered if, um, maybe not to go into too much detail, but where can people find out more information or the background to kind of that for, for Huntington's? Uh, I would recommend HD Buzz. They're the best around to uh, to um, explain these complicated concepts. Um, but as I said, it's basically a survey of your genome, looking at uh, the different genes and seeing which ones also associate with different age, age at onset. So you have the uh, CAG repeat in the uh, Huntington gene, but then there's other genes that must play some role. So figuring out which ones they are, you look at the people who have uh, expected age of onset according to their CAG repeat, but then you look at outliers and those differences um, can be associated with certain other genes. And that's what happened. Well, if you look at 14,000 genomes, you finally, these, um, these modifiers start to peak out. It's hard to identify them, but if you do enough people, 
then um, you finally see a signal and you can identify these modifiers and then do work on them directly to figure out how they work. So, right. but it really shows the uh, importance of research and uh, people taking part and, you know, those 14,000 people whose genomes were, were surveyed, uh, they had no idea that GWAS was going to be what happened to their blood DNA because GWAS wasn't around then when most of the samples were given. So, you know, take part, if people take part in research, then good things will happen. No, definitely. No, that's really good. Um, and as kind of we move forward, um, I know there's a lot of um, different companies and, and drugs, as you mentioned, um, kind of in development at the moment. As we move forward, hopefully potentially to therapies, you know, becoming available in a few years. I know um, some of the team at CHDI are working with uh, CPATH from a regulatory perspective and also from a um, market access and what we call reimbursement to drugs perspective as well, because that's going to be really important. Are you expecting maybe projects like that to, to expand to CHDI or? Um, I always think that um, the biology is the truly difficult thing. So if we can, if we can conquer that, then getting, uh, getting drug prices uh, sorted out will be much simpler. So um, let's tackle the hard problems first, get the drugs, and then we'll see where we are. That's the, that's the most important thing, get the drugs. Once they're there, then they'll be used and they'll be available. And we have to figure out how that happens. But uh, at the moment, our focus is strictly on getting uh, drugs, drug candidates developed and tested. And uh, we can worry about the human activities later on. We're, we're up against the biology at the moment. So that's our biggest focus. No, definitely. That's, that's a really, really great answer. Um, and maybe just one final question then, because I know um, a few people wonder on the um, kind of pharma talks as well, um, why we need so many different therapies. I mean, that might be obvious to some people. Some people might be wondering why do we need so many people? I know, you know, some aren't always successful. So um, maybe it'd be just good to touch on why we need a wide range of different types of therapies. You know, you talked about the ASOs and the small molecules. Yeah. So first of all, we need a wide range, uh, something our, our chief scientific officer likes to call shots on goal. Um, you have to have lots of shots on goal to make sure you score some goals. So not all of these programs are going to work. So, you know, many drug programs sadly fail. And um, but without with, you know, with this many programs, we're hoping some of them will be will work. Secondly, when we do have effective drugs, we can always make better effective drugs. And when we do have better effective drugs, we can combine them so that, you know, might, one drug might attack, might lower your Huntington, uh, specifically your mutant Huntington. And another one might do something else like uh, stabilize the uh, expansion of the, of the CAG repeats, uh, this somatic instability I was talking about. So if you think about HIV, it was a terrible, terrible problem uh, for, for maybe 15 years, I think before, no, 13 years before uh, we saw anti, highly active antiretroviral therapy. Basically, that was a cocktail of drugs. And something as difficult and serious and pernicious as Huntington's disease will probably require uh, to, to totally fix it, a cocktail of drugs. So in the meantime, we get as many successes as we can and continue and continue so we can combine them and uh, make sure that we can get patients as disease free for as long as possible. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Simon. I think that just about brings us to the to the end of the session. So thank you so much, Simon, for your presentation. Thank you for all, all the attendees for attending. So up next on this track, we have a 15 minute break, but we do have a last minute session over on track one, who will um, be by Dr. Michael Hayden, who is from, um, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Pry Prylenia, about their Proof HD study. And that will be followed on track one by Unicure's HD research update and on track two by Lyle Turner, who we are calling Mr. Everest, who's gonna to talk to us about all the amazing fundraising he's done for, for Huntington's disease. So um, thank you again, Simon, for your time today. Thank you, Elliot, thank you, everybody. And uh, bye to everybody, thanks.